I thank God for another opportunity to stand before you today, to Dr. Jones, to all the ministers, uh, to my wife Jackie of 30 years. Go ahead and wave, baby. Yes, thank you. Good morning. I have to say hello to my wife. Even though I said hello already, still got to say hello. I am blessed. Peace. We want to talk today about peace. If you turn, we go to Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. It's a, it's a well-known passage of scripture. We're going to talk about peace this morning. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But then he said to them, Why are you so afraid? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Peace. Let us pray. Father God, who art in heaven, we love you. We want to hold to your hand because there's no safer place to be. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to hear from you. Because, Lord, that's what I want. I want to hear from you, Father God. I don't want to hear from Keith. Lord, we want to hear from you this morning. Have your way in this place and to all those who are listening. Let your Holy Spirit lead us and guide us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Wouldn't it be great if we had that much peace? How much would you pay for peace? Peace of mind, peace of spirit, peace in your home, peace on the job. To be able to be in a storm and sleep like Jesus on the pillow while all hell is can I say that while all hell is raging around you you still sleep like Jesus well the bottom line up front is I've got good news for you Jesus already paid the price for you to have that peace Jesus already, that's the end of the sermon right there, jumping to the end. Jesus already paid the price. In Mark chapter 4, we find Jesus teaching by the Sea of Galilee and surrounded by a large crowd. And it was so crowded, the passage says that it was a great multitude. He goes out on the boat to have more space because he was so pressed by the crowd. Nothing Jesus does is by accident or coincidence. You know, I still hear people say that it's a coincidence. Nothing Jesus does is by coincidence. Mark chapter 4 is chock full of knowledge and, and great instruction from the Lord himself. 
Today in this sermon, we're going to deal with, with just the end of Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. But scanning through Mark chapter 4 from the beginning, we see Jesus is teaching in the form of parables. Jesus uses parables to teach believers, to teach Christians. By the seaside, Jesus tells the multitude the parable of the sower and the seeds, the parable of the lamp, the parable of the growing seed, the parable of the mustard seed, and all great passages to preach from. But, but in Mark 4, 9, he says, and he said to them, he who has ears to hear, let them hear. This might sound like someone saying, hey, pay attention to what I'm about to say. But in reality, Jesus is understanding and knows that the word of God cannot be understood with human understanding. To, to, to some people, they're just good stories. I've heard people say that. Those are some good stories in the Bible. Well, to you, they might be good stories. I've had atheist buddies who told me they've read the Bible cover to cover, and they probably have, and they may have read more than we have. I've read it, but it's different when you're reading it with enlightenment from the Holy Spirit. So they've told me they've read the whole Bible, and I say, you still haven't learned anything. You still don't know Jesus. Verse 11 goes on to say, and he said to them, to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, all things come in parables, so that seeing they may, not, they may see, but not perceive, and hearing they may hear, but not understand. So Jesus gave them the four parables that are written in Mark 4, but verse 33 says, and with many such parables that day, he spoke to the world, spoke to them, but without a parable, he did not speak. And when they were alone, he explained things separately to the disciples. So he's there all day. It's not just the four parables. He's speaking many parables. And then after the parables, he's explaining things to the disciples. They probably had some meals. They talk about that in the Bible. They probably had a break or two. Because like me, if you're over 50, mm, you're going to have to go every now and then. Sorry to be so, so clear, but you need a break during the day sometimes. So all in all, it was a long day, which brings us to Mark 4, 35 through 41. I won't read it again, even though I said my notes to read it again. Jesus was exhausted from a full day of teaching and then teaching again to the disciples and the multitude, the crowd. They were all still on the hillside. And he wanted to get away for a little break and get to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is not as crowded city-wise as the side they were on. One thing to note in this passage is that we see both the humanity and the deity of Jesus Christ. We see the, the humanity in Christ because he was fully man. And if you stand up here and talk, all day long and then have to get with your people and explain to them again what you were talking about you're going to be tired it said he was exhausted and we see we see one hand his humanity on the other hand we see his deity because he's also fully god because he said to the wind and to the sea peace be still won't go into that, but if you sign up for ABI, plug for ABI, Antioch Bible Institute, they go deep into that and learn all the Greek words and the Hebrew words, and Reverend Snowden will pull out this giant book that, you know, explains everything. Well, everything. Today I want to focus on Mark 4, 35 through 41, with three quick points. Point one, storms come. Not telling you something that you don't already know. You know that storms come, and I know that storms come. Like I said earlier in the sermon, there are no coincidences in Christ. The telling of parables, the, the separate teaching to the disciples, followed up with the idea to take the boat across the sea, was not a coincidence. Jesus knew what was coming. 
just like he knows what's coming in your life. He knew that the disciples needed a more concrete and practical demonstration of who Jesus is. Is. There are no coincidences with Jesus Christ. Jesus used that day and that evening to continue giving a lesson. But guess what? He was giving a lesson to the disciples because he knew that after his death, burial, and resurrection, they would go through some storms. Not just a storm. It's more than a storm getting crucified. It's more than a storm getting put in prison unjustly. But he knew they were going to go through some things, going to get stoned, going to get talked about. They were going to go through some storms. And just like that, storms come in our lives constantly. It shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. No matter how great you are, storms will come. No matter how rich you are or poor you think you are, storms will come. No matter your education or your perceived lack of education, storms are going to come. And here's a surprise. Whether you are saved or unsaved, storms are going to come. Just because you, you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you should, does not mean that you are now free from storms in your life. Can I get a witness? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It doesn't mean that you are free from trials and tribulations. The difference is, is Jesus in the boat with you? No one is immune from the storms of life. We will all go through. You know, my great-grandmother used to say, and many of you have heard this, that either you're in a storm, you're coming out of a storm, or you're about to go through a storm. So you might as well get your mind set to understand that a storms are a way of life. They happen. Storms come in all matter of forms. For some, the storms may come because of a decision you made. For some, the storms will come because you made a visit to the doctor and you got some unexpected news. For some, the storms come because of lack of funds. You don't know how you're going to make ends meet. Storms may come because of relationship. No, storms will come because of relationships. For some, and listen closely to this, storms may come because you, you have feelings and subsequent temptations that come from thinking you are alone in this world. No one understands you. And we shouldn't take that lightly. At Wednesday night prayer this last week, uh, one of the subjects was prayer for mental health and emotional healing. You are not alone. Jesus is there. If you call on him. He's there whether you call on him or not. But Jesus is there and he's waiting for you to call on him. Sometimes the world throws storms at us, and sometimes we bring them on ourselves. So my first point was storms will come. Regardless of how they come, they will come. My second point is, while you're in the storm, look to Christ. Ride with Christ. I hear people say, that's my ride or die. <laughs> Your ride or die better be Jesus. It's okay to have friends, but your ride or die better be Jesus. Because if it's me, and there's a bear chasing us, you've seen the meme, I'm going to outrun you. And hopefully, well, I don't hope you get it hurt, but I'm going that way. Jesus better be your ride or die. It's obvious that Jesus is the answer since we're sitting here in church, Right? But do we always look to Jesus? Be honest. I don't. I haven't. Is Jesus even in your boat? 
if you don't know Jesus Christ, again, that's the bottom line up front, flipping to the end. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's kind of hard for you to cry out to him. But for Christians, if you know Jesus Christ, then you should have access to the power, to the grace, to the mercy that is Jesus. But is it just sitting there not being used? Is Jesus asleep in the boat waiting for you to say, help me? But you don't want to wake him up because you got this. It seems the disciples had been bouncing around in that storm for a little while before they woke Jesus up. It was almost like they used Jesus as a last resort. He'd been in the boat the whole time. The storm hit him and it had been going for a while. But they waited until they thought they were about to lose their lives and they called on Jesus. How much do we have to go through before we turn to Christ? Jesus wasn't always my first option. But the more and more he works it out for me, I look back and say, doggone it. If I had just asked for his help way back then, I wouldn't be. I'd be a little further along. I'd have a little more trust. I'd have a little more faith. You see, as Christians, problems just don't up and appear. But as a Christian, you have someone who said in John 16, 13, 16, 33, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulations. In this world, you will have storms. In this world, you will have trouble. Yes. But he says at the end of that, be of good cheer. Yes. For I have overcome the world. Amen. He didn't say you won't have storms. He said, be of good cheer because I have overcome. Yes. You just need to rely on me. We said up front that storms will come whether you are saved or unsaved. And Jesus Christ said, I have overcome the world. That means he's overcome the wind. He's overcome the rain. He's overcome the floods. He's overcome disobedient children. He's overcome a marriage relationship that can't just seem to work out, but, but needs to. He's overcome it all. You just need to reach out. And rely on Jesus. He said that you would have peace. Not just peace in the quiet times. Not just peace when everything is all right and your bills are paid. Not just peace when you're popular and you think everybody likes you. Not just peace when things are great. Jesus said you can have peace even in the storm. The disciples knew this and they called out to Jesus eventually. Pressing through, first point, storms come. Second point, if you're a Christian, ride with Christ. And my third and final point, faith, not fear. In that passage from Mark 4, 35 through 41, he says in Mark 4, 40, then he said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? After rebuking the wind and telling the sea to be quiet, Jesus asked the disciples, do you still have no faith? You've been walking with me. You've been talking with me. I already told you you're mine. I've given you parables. I've explained them. You've seen me heal the sick. They watched Jesus perform miracles. They knew who Jesus was. Yet they were still afraid in the midst of the storm. 
I'm not better than them. I've seen Jesus do wonderful things in my life. One right there, my wife. Sorry, that's the way it is. <laughs> I've seen Jesus do wonderful things in my life. He saved me. He healed me many times. He calmed me because, you know, I preached a couple of sermons ago that I'm an angry man. But Jesus calmed me down. Jesus has answered prayer after prayer after prayer. And I bet many of you could say the same thing. Jesus bought you with a price. He brought you out of your condition. Jesus has been a miracle worker in many of our lives, but you know what? Just like for the disciples, it's easy to look away sometimes. I'm not getting up here criticizing the disciples when I know who I am. I've been in storms and I'm like, what do I do next? Phone a friend? You know, call somebody else? Pray? Yeah, I'm going to get to... No. You need to start with prayer. It's easy to say. It's not always easy to do. When you're going through a storm, it's easy to get distracted. Sometimes easy to forget. In Matthew chapter 14, that's a different sermon, again, for a different day. But when Peter got out of the boat, that's on a, a different boat journey, but it's kind of the same thing. When Peter got out of the boat because he wanted to walk on the water just like Jesus, he was out there, he was strutting, and then he saw the wind. And then he saw a wave, and he was like, I'm in trouble. He took his eyes off of Jesus just like we do sometimes. It's the same for us. When we take our eyes off of Jesus in or out of a storm, we will sink. I don't care if it's good times or bad times. You take your eyes off of Jesus, you're going to sink. Just like Peter walking on the water. However, when you call out to Jesus, he's still there to lift me up, to lift you up. There's a perfect song that, you know, today was a song for, uh, day for hymns. There's one that I was already thinking about. It says, like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea, when the storms of life are raging and their fury falls on me, I wonder what I have done to make this race so hard to run. But I say to my soul, take courage. The Lord will make a way somehow. The Lord will make a way somehow. When you're hurting, the Lord will make a way somehow. When money is tight, the Lord will make a way somehow. When there's trouble at work, don't tell me, tell Jesus. The Lord will make a way somehow. When there's trouble at home, don't call mama, call Jesus. It's okay to call mama, but mama can't help you like Jesus can. When people aren't acting right, the Lord will make a way somehow. The Lord will make a way somehow.